set up the game of Village, first set up the game area. To do this, place the game board in the middle of the playing area. Next, form a general supply of the coins, and also a general supply of the goods tiles. Separate the goods tiles by type into wagons, plows, scrolls, oxen, and horses. Also place the bags of grain, the four types of influence cubes, and the black plague cubes in a supply. Place the green bag included with the game somewhere near the cubes. Shuffle the customer tiles and place them face down next to the market area of the game board. Flip up tiles to fill the spaces in the market. In a two-player game, there are a few variations in setup. When filling the market, leave the spaces labeled 3 and 4 empty. Also place family members of an unused color on each grave labeled 3 and 4, and on each village chronicle space labeled with 3 or 4. There are also some variations in a three-player game. First, when filling the market, leave the space labeled 4 empty. Also place an unused colored family member on the grave labeled 4 and place an unused family member on each of the chronicle spaces with a 4 on them. Next, place the next starting player marker on the matching symbol on the game board. Place the four black monk pieces in the black bag and place the black bag somewhere below the church. Locate the appropriate setup card for the number of players in the game. Each card has an amount of symbols in the top right corner that tells the amount of players it is used for. So this card would be used in a two-player game, this card in a three-player game, and this card in a four-player game. Place the appropriate card for your game out near the game board. Also place the mass overview card somewhere near the game setup card. After the game area has been set up, each player will set up their player area. First, each player will choose a farmyard board in a color and place it in front of them. Then they will gain the 11 family members and 8 markers, matching their farm board color. Make sure each family member figure has the correct stickers on them. Each player should have 4 1 family members, 3 2 family members, 2 3 family members, and 2 4 family members. Place the 4 family members with a 1 on them on your farmyard board. These represent the first generation of your family. All players in the game will place their two, three, and four family members in a general supply. These represent future family members that are not yet born. Each player will also place one of their markers on the cloud to the right of the bridge on their farmyard board. Each player will also place one of their markers on the book space on the top left corner of the game board. Each player will start the game with one coin, which they will place next to their farmyard. The oldest player in the game will also gain the starting player marker. After the game area has been set up and each player has set up their player area, they are ready to start the game. To begin each round in the game, start by seeding the action spaces. The setup card placed out in the beginning of the game is the player's guide to seeding the spaces. First, the players will look to the left side of the card to find out how many cubes to put in the bag. For instance, if they were playing a four-player game, they would place five of each of the colored cubes and all six of the black plague cubes into the green bag. If at any time during the game there are not enough of a colored cube, put as many cubes as are available in that color. After placing the appropriate cubes in the bag, look to this part of the card. This will tell how many of each cubes to randomly draw from the green bag and place in each location. So they will locate the yellow location on the board and place seven randomly drawn cubes in that area. They will place three randomly drawn cubes in this brown area, and then they will continue placing cubes based on the picture. After they have finished seeding each action space, each colored area will have cubes in it. Now the player holding the starting player marker will take their turn. On any player's turn, they must take either one colored influence cube or one black plague cube. If a player takes any of the black plague cubes, they will immediately return it to the supply, and then they will move their lifetime track marker up two spaces on the lifetime track. If the cube taken is any other color than a black cube, it will be placed on that player's farmyard board. After taking the one cube, a player is allowed to decide whether or not to use the action of the space they took the cube from. There are several action spaces in the game. Let's take a look at each of these spaces. If a player takes a cube from the grain harvest area, they may use the grain harvest action. In order to use the grain harvest action, a player must have at least one family member remaining on their farmyard. When they use the grain harvest action, they immediately gain two bags of grain and place them on their farmyard board. If a player uses this action and also has a horse and a plow, they may take three bags of grain when using this action. 
And if a player owns oxen in a plow, they may take four bags of grain when they use this action. These amounts are also shown on the farmyard board as a reference. Each farmyard board has a capacity of five bags of grain. The family members used to harvest will remain on that player's farm board, and any oxen, horses, or plows used will remain in the player's player area. The family action is a second action space. Whenever a player takes a cube from this location, they may use the space as one of two possible options. Their first option is to gain a new family member from the general supply of the lowest value, and they will add the new family member to their farmyard board. The second option for the family space action is to take one family member that has not yet died and return it to their farmyard board. They may not take back a family member that is placed in a grave or the village chronicle. Using an action in the craft section allows a player to produce one good in one of the five craft buildings. There are two ways players can use the craft action. They can either produce one of the goods for that building by paying the items shown or they can train one of their family members and use time to produce that good. When they choose to use time, they will place their family member in that building. Then they will immediately move their lifetime marker up the amount of symbols shown to the left. This represents the training period for that family member. After the initial training, they can immediately spend the amount of time in the yellow bubble to gain the item shown. The time for training, shown on the left, is only required one time, as long as they keep that family member in that building. If they remove that family member, they must retrain a member or buy the item. The mill is the only building that a player may not place a family member in to be trained. To use the mill's action, a player must pay two of their bags of grain, and then they must move their lifetime tracker up two spaces. After doing both of these things, they will gain two coins. Any family member that is placed in one of the buildings must stay in that building until they either die or are removed with the family action. There is no limit to the number of family members that may be on any building, regardless of color. There is also no limit to the number of goods or coins a player can have. So if the general supply runs out, you may use stand-in items to represent those things. Whenever a player takes a cube from the market, a market day will always occur. A market day is a chance for a player to give goods to a customer in exchange for prestige points at the end of the game. The only customers that are involved in the market day are those in spaces with a blue border. All other customers are in the waiting line. Each customer is looking for a certain amount of things and will give you a certain amount of prestige points at the end of the game. So this player is looking for both a plow and an oxen and will give five prestige points. The player that triggered the market day is the first player to be allowed to choose a customer. They do not have to serve a customer if they do not want to. Whenever a player sells items to a customer, they will remove them from their player area and return them to the general supply. Then they will take the appropriate customer tile and place it face down next to their farmyard board. The points for that tile will be counted at the end of the game. After the first player decides whether or not to serve a customer, each other player in clockwise order may serve one customer but they must give not only the items the customer is looking for, they must also give one green influence cube and move their marker up one space on the lifetime track. These items are shown on top of the market stand as a reference. If a player chooses not to give items to a customer, they are allowed to pass. When everyone has had a chance to serve one customer, anyone who did not pass may choose to serve another customer. This time, when they serve a customer, each player must pay one green cube and one time, along with whatever the customer is looking for. The market day continues until either all customers in blue squares have been served or until all players have passed their turn. After the market day is over, move any remaining customer tiles down the line. Then, move any customers from the waiting line into the market. Finally, refill the waiting line with tiles from the side of the game board. If at any time during the game all of the customer tiles have been claimed, the market will remain empty for the rest of the game. Travel is another action available. The first family member that is sent out to travel will be placed next to the travel map. Then, the player must decide whether to travel to the city to the left or the city to the right by paying the cost. So if this player decided to travel to the left, they would pay two brown cubes, two time, and discard one wagon tile. Then they would move their family member to the new city, place their marker there, and gain three points. Later in the game, if a player uses a travel action and already has a family member on the travel map, they may use the travel action in one of two ways. Their first option is to move one of their family members already on the travel map to a new location, 
by paying the cost and placing one of their markers on the new city. Their second option is to add another family member from their farmyard to the travel map. To do this, they may pay the cost for any route to a new city and then place a new family member to that city and also place one of their markers on that city. Each new city you travel to will give a reward. This symbol gives prestige points. This symbol gives a player one coin and this symbol allows a player to gain any two influence cubes from the general supply. A player may only place one of their markers in each city, and they may only gain the reward from each city one time. There is no limit to the number of family members or the number of different colored markers that can be in each city. The council chamber is another action area. This area gives different benefits to a player based on the stage of the chamber they are in. There are three ways to use this action. First, you may take a family member from your farmyard and place them on the first stage of the council chamber. To do this, it costs the player two things. It always costs one time, and then a player may choose to either pay one scroll or two green influence cubes. If the next starting player marker has not been claimed, you will gain that marker. The second option a player has is to move one of their family members to the next stage to the right. Once again, they must always pay the amount of time and they must pay either one scroll or two green influence cubes. Whenever a player moves their family member up, they are allowed to use the privilege of their new stage or any stage to the left of where they are. This privilege gives a player any two influence cubes of their choice. This privilege symbol allows a player to gain any one good tile of their choice. Goods tiles are either oxen, horses, scrolls, wagons, or plows. And this symbol allows a player to pay one coin and move their marker up three spaces on the prestige track. The third option a player has when using the council chamber action is to not move their family member, but they may still use the privilege of either the space their family member is on or any space to the left. The church action allows a player to pay either one brown influence cube or three time to place one of their family members from their farmyard board into the black bag. Family members placed in the black bag may be of benefit to a player at the end of the round during the mass. The well action is the final action. Instead of a player taking a cube from an action space on the board, they will return three of their influence cubes of the same color to the supply. When they do this, they may choose any one of the previously described actions to use. The well action may only be used if there is at least one cube left on any action space in the game. During the game, players must pay for certain items with time by moving their marker around their lifetime track. Anytime a player moves their marker across the bridge, one of their oldest family members will die. If they move across the bridge while completing an action, they may complete the action before one of their family members dies. If a player crosses the bridge while involved in a market day, their family member will immediately die, and then the market day will continue. Whenever a player's family member dies, they must choose one of their family members of the lowest possible value on either their farmyard board or placed on the game board. Family members that were placed in the black bag or that still remain in the general supply to the side of the game board cannot die. Whenever a player dies, they may be placed in one of two areas, either in the village chronicle or in an anonymous grave. Whenever a family member dies, they will be placed in the village chronicle as long as there is enough space. Their placement in the Village Chronicle will be based on the place that they died. Each area has a colored symbol that matches a section in the Village Chronicle. So a player that died from the Craft area would be placed in an available space of the Craft area of the Chronicle. A player that died while traveling would be placed in an available travel space. A player that dies in the Council Chamber will be placed in the Council section. A player that dies in the Church will go to the Church section. And a family member that dies from a player's farmyard board will be placed in the farmyard section. Family members in the Village Chronicle can score player points during the end of the game. If a family member dies in an area and the Chronicle spaces for that matching area are already filled, then that player's family member will be placed in an anonymous grave. These family members will not be worth any points at the end of the game. After the last cube is taken from the board and the player resolves the action if they choose, the round is over. When the round ends, a mass is said. The mass consists of three phases. The first phase is to draw four items from the black bag. 
The black bag consists of the black monk pieces and any family members a player placed in the bag when they use the church action. Items from the black bag will either be paid to be taken out or will be randomly selected. First, the start player will decide whether or not they want to pick one or more of their family members from the bag by paying one coin per family member picked. This is a way to ensure that their family members are picked during the mass. After the start player chooses whether or not to pick one or more of their family members, the other players will decide whether or not to pick one or more of their family members by paying one coin per family member they pick. They will do this in clockwise order until there are a total of four family members picked or no more players want to pay to pick their family members. If a total of four family members are not picked, the black bag will be shuffled and then items will be randomly drawn from the bag until a total of four items have been drawn. Any black monk pieces are returned to the bag. And any family members drawn are placed in the rightmost window of the church. Any family members that were not drawn from the bag during Mass will remain there and have a chance to be drawn during the next Mass. The next phase of Mass is to move family members up in the church hierarchy. The starting player will begin and will choose whether or not to move one or several of their family members one or more spaces in the church. They may move as many family members as far as they wish as long as they have the grain to do so. For example, the blue player could move their family member up one space and pay one grain. Then they could move their family member up another space and pay two more grain. If they had the grain to do so, they could also move another family up one space. After the starting player has decided whether or not to move up in the hierarchy, the next player in clockwise order will also decide whether or not to move up. When each player has received their one chance to move family members up in the church, they will move into phase three of the mass. The final phase of mass is to award the player with the most family members in the church with two prestige points on the prestige track. If there is a tie for the most family members, the player with the family members on the leftmost window gains the points. If there is a tie for the most family members in the church, and also a tie for the most family members in the leftmost window, each of the tied players gains two prestige points. When the mass is over, a new round will begin. If any player gained the next starting player marker, they are now the new starting player for the next round, and will gain the starting player marker from whichever player currently holds it. They will return the next starting player marker to its matching location on the game board. If no player took the next starting player marker from the game board, the current player holding the starting marker will remain the starting player. A new round will now begin by filling the green bag with cubes based on the setup card, and then seating the action spaces once again. The game ends when a family member is added to either the last empty space in the Village Chronicle, or if a family member is added to the last anonymous grave. When one of these two things happen, all of their players in the game are able to take one final action. The player who added the last family member to the game board does not get a final action. As players take their final turn, they will follow the normal rules of the game. If the game board runs out of cubes before all players have taken their final action, any remaining players may still take one action without taking cubes. Any family members that die during the final turn are simply removed from the game because there are no more graves left for them. If the end of the game is triggered during a market day, the market will be played out completely. After the market is finished, the player who triggered the end of the game during the market is determined. If the player who triggered the end is the same player who started the market day action, then all other players except that player get one final turn. If the player who triggered the end of the game is not the player who triggered the market day, then all players, including that player, get one final turn. After each player has taken their last turn of the game, there is one final mass, and then final scoring takes place. Final scoring consists of six scoring areas. The first area to score is the travel map. Each player will count the number of their markers they have placed in cities. Then they will gain points for their markers based on the chart next to the travel map. So the blue player with two of their markers on the travel map would gain three points. Next, they will score the council chamber. Players will score points for each family member they have in the council chamber in stages two to four. The points they score are shown in the top right corner of each stage. So for example, Red would score 2 points for this family member and 4 points for this family member. After that, they will score the church. They will gain points for each of their family members they have in the church. The points they gain are shown above the window of the church they are in. So Red would gain 3 points for this family member and White would gain 2 points for this family member. 
Next, they will score the Village Chronicle. They will gain points based on the number of family members they have placed there. The points they gain are found at the bottom of the Chronicle in this chart. For example, Reb has five family members in the Chronicle, so it scored 12 points. The next thing to score are the customer tiles. Each player will turn over the customer tiles of any customers they serve during the game. They will gain the amount of points shown on the top left corner of each tile. The final thing to score are the coins a player has left at the end of the game. Each player will gain one point per coin they have remaining. After each player has finished scoring all of their points, the player who ends the game with the most points is the winner. In the case of a tie, the tied player who ends the game with the most customer tiles wins. If they are still tied, the player who ends with the most living family members, either on their farmyard or on the game board, wins.